Whoa! Hey guys! Welcome to the second episode of The Lowdown, which is my catch-all series for anything and everything that doesn't fit into my other show. So, essentially, it's my vlog. If you haven't seen the first episode, you can click here. There, I did a behind the scenes of my campaign shoot for Quixus Tech 63 Tactical Half Mask. So that was a photo and video shoot. So that was fun. And today's episode is going to be fun as well. Last month, this channel hit 1,000 subscribers. And I have you guys to thank for that. So thank you very much for your support. I never thought that would be possible since the first time I posted content, which was Jan 10. So that would be, make it five months. That's amazing. That was really, really fast. So thank you guys again for your support and your comments and your constructive criticisms. That really helped a lot. One of the things I wanted to do to commemorate this milestone is to also do a YouTube studio tour. And that's what we'll do today. I'll take you around my small studio, point at things, randomly probably, <laughs> and also show you how I do certain things, my processes, mainly to help you out if you're starting out your new studio or you know just curious about what's happening behind the camera. For this tour, I will be using the Dayty V Mic D4 Duo microphone. So this is a new product, it's shipping on August 13. And what's wonderful about it is that you can record from the front and the rear at the same time. So imagine this sitting on the top of your camera, on your hot shoe or your cold shoe, and the audio from the front goes into the left channel of your audio and the audio from the rear goes into the right channel of your audio track. And also it has an input for another audio recording device, let's say a lapel mic to replace the rear and just have to toggle the switch. So this is a microphone that vloggers have been waiting for. It's perfect for what we do. I've actually already reviewed this microphone, but that video comes out next week. But if the link is already appearing here, then we're good. If not, just wait a few more days. Now, I also made sure to identify which clips in this video that I'm using, let's say the front capsule or the rear capsule for the audio, or if I'm using a lavalier for that particular scene. So at least you will have some reference. Okay, that's it for the intro. Let's start by turning on the house lights. Cool. So, welcome to my YouTube studio. As you can see, it's, it's really small. It's just a room. I have kept the air conditioning on so that you have a reference for how good this microphone is, the D4 Duo, when it comes to background noise. And also, it gets very hot if I turn it off. To orient you, this is my gaming rig, which has been taken over. Then my editing rig. Then here you have the center stage where I do most of the shoots, especially Hammerhead Gearhead. Behind it are shelves. I'll take you through that as well. Then bathroom door, entry door, and then a couch for sleeping while rendering in between edits. So let's do the center stage first. My main light is the Godox SL60W. It's an amazing, amazing light. I'm really impressed and it's a fraction of the cost of the Aperture 120D with an Aperture Light Dome 2 modifier without a grid. Both are mounted on a C-stand with a sandbag and you have markings also down there below on the floor so that if ever someone bumps into this, it's easy for me to revert to the previous position. And you have everything that's charging right here. Behind it is another SL60W with an Aperture Light Dome Mini 2, but this time I put the blue gel for color contrast in the background as you can see right there. So this is how the background looks without the background light, and this is how it looks with it turned on. As for my desk, it looks really good, but a secret feature is that it's only covered by these vinyl panels that have a wooden texture on it. So this lets me change the backdrop, background, the surface, depending on what I'm shooting, whether it's an overhead shot or a product shot. But this is the default setting, the default color and texture because it looks good and matches my shelves. At the center of it would be the ATEM Mini Pro. You can check out my unboxing and first impressions link right here. 
For my main camera, I use a Nikon Z6 with a 24 to 70 f4 lens. It's housed inside an 8 in cage with a Scorpio handle attached. For my overhead camera, it's a Nikon Z7 with an FTZ adapter and 50mm lens and it's mounted on C-stand. For my audio, my main mic is the Deity S Mic 2S. So that's one of their higher end microphones. It's a shorter version and it's connected by XLR to my mixer. And it's perfect because it's peeking out of my frame. It's a good way to show Deity as a brand because they're my sponsor. For my backup, I have a Deity V-Lab on the chest strap. So this is wrapped around my torso under my shirt. So both are recording at the same time, sending signals to the mixer because I always want backup with audio. So you'll never know if you'll have a hum, a buzz, whatever artifacts, and that's going to kill your video. So as I always say, you can get away with bad video, but not with bad sound. And right in front of me, beside the camera, is the Atomos Ninja 5 monitor slash recorder. So the feed goes into there via HDMI, so I get the ProRes and log footage that I like. And then right under it is my Beach Tech mixer. It's a DXA Micro Pro, so it's perfect for on location and studio shoots. A bit of a break, a bit of trivia, this whole setup is new. So the camera angle, the positioning of the desk against the backdrop, the lighting and overhead camera, these are all new. If you remember the earlier episodes of Hammerhead Gearhead, the camera was right down the center and was a bit further away. And I felt it was a bit too detached. Compared to this, I feel like it's closer. The audience, you guys could relate and connect to me more. So let me know though what you think about it. Let me know in the comments if you feel like the old one is better or if the new one is better, especially with that contrast light. What I like about this is that I can also showcase my sponsors. So like Deity microphones and then I usually have a laptop here with the Columbia logo and then of course the Nikon Z boxes right there. So let me know in the comments which one you think is better. So up here are mostly my photography and underwater books, nature books. Everything is right there. Then down here are all the art books. So I used to sketch and paint. So most of them are right here. They are guarded by these two Megatex from Quix, the OG and the Ghost Mode. If you haven't seen my review of his half mask, click on the link right here. Then finally, we have more books, instructionals for my sketching and drawing, and then other books right down below. Here in the middle row at the very top is the bag for my Aperture Light Dome 2 and Mini 2. I don't know yet what to put here, so I just put it here first. It's, it's a big object anyway, it's black, it's good for the background. Then next you have the Pelican cases, so what I will do, I'll pull one out and then we'll switch to the overhead camera and I'll switch to a lapel for just because it's easier. And then let's go through them. So first, let's go through this Nano case right here. Okay, so now you're hearing me from the Deity VLAV lavalier mic that's strapped to my chest and it's connected to the input of the Deity D4 Duo. So this is a Nanook 945. Nanook in Inuit means polar bear. So I find that appropriate since I photograph polar bears. So let's open it. Okay. All right, so inside is my DJI Phantom 4 Pro that I haven't used in over, um, not over, but at least a year. Here is the drone itself and the remote that I haven't used. I remember putting these stickers up and down and forward and reverse. So I wouldn't forget it because I don't fly it as often anymore. And then the batteries and ND and polarizing filters are all there. Yeah, I should fly this actually. Next is my Pelican case for my underwater housing. Wow, it's heavy. And this is why I normally travel with 100 kilograms of luggage allowance. It's crazy. So this is my Pelican 1610 case for my underwater housing. If I flip the frame very quickly, 
These are all Sea Shepherd stickers and hex and the shear water for my dive computer. Cape Clasp, Cinebags, Columbia of course, my sponsor. And let's flip it again. All right, let's open it. This has got to be the heaviest of all my luggage. There it is. Here is the working mat. Wow. So I haven't used it in so long that it already has marks here. And then you have the dome. And then you have the dome port. This is for wide angle and then the extension ports. This. Okay. I haven't gone diving in, it's gonna be a year by the time this video comes out. So I haven't used this in so long, but yeah. It's good to always open things up. All right, okay. And that's it for that. And finally is my Pelican Air 1535. It has mostly everything that I have here that I need to keep and protect. So the Ninja 5, the Atomos, everything. So all it goes right here. Like I said, in this Pelican Air 1535 goes all the equipment that I use for vlogging and for live streaming. So if I'm not using, say the Atomos Ninja 5, it goes here. My Beach Tech Mixer goes here and everything else like the, my Ninja Star from Atomos as well for recording the EVF, it goes here. And my other vlogging gear and items and tripods and so on. So the ATEM Mini goes in here as well. Finally, for the last row, I have the two Z6 and Z7 boxes right here. Also good for branding. And then my two dry cabinets. First, here on the right are the cameras. On the left are all the accessories. This is actually defective. It's not plugged in, but it's a, still a good way to store and protect everything. Now above the shelves are all the boxes of most of the gear that I bought. And I love keeping them and displaying them and also because the resale value of the items that you have for sale are so much higher if you still have the box with you. As for this corner, I don't know yet what to do with it. So all of these, the shelves in the room, they're all new. I just had them renovated with the purpose of being a studio. So for this corner, this nook, I just have a photo of my dog, my late dog Brownie with his ashes, so it's more of a memorial now. And then right here is something I got from Churchill, Manitoba when I went there to photograph polar bears. So I have a lot of those around the room, like for example, like this one from Jungfrau York in Switzerland, and then this one from Raffles Hotel in Singapore, and then this mask from my assignment in Papua New Guinea. So I like collecting things from the destinations that I've been to, much like anyone else, really. And this here is my work desk. Underneath is Chucky, my dog. So this is my MacBook Pro. That's my main workstation wherever I go and when I edit. And then I have one monitor and another one usually right beside it. So that one. So it's a triple monitor setup for editing. And then at the far end is my gaming rig. But because of work from home, the quarantine, my wife has been working here in my studio. So she has taken over that area. So she's a stockbroker. So she has two laptops using my monitor and then using my gaming rig. So bye for now, buddy. Then these curtains are blackout curtains. I purchased them specifically because I don't want any light in when I'm shooting. However, to add to this, if I part this aside, there is another sheet outside it's called the black backing and you know what let me show you okay so this is right outside my studio and that's the black backing another layer of thick black fabric to seal off and prevent the outdoor natural light from going in so now it's raining as you can see and this is how the d4 duo does with the rain in the outdoors and if i don't need it I just roll it up and it gets folded up right there. So it's a very, well, I thought of everything really. And 
yeah, it's pretty tough. Oh, I was going to say tough and it just came off. <laughs> I guess not so tough. Okay, so we're back. One thing I wasn't able to show you was the B Studio. So that is right outside and it's a mess right now. That is where I shoot my unboxing and product shots where I don't need to be seen. So it's better shot outside so I don't mess this up. This stays like this, which is how I need it. Here are clips from the first episode of The Lowdown where I take you behind the scenes of the shoot for the tactical half mask. So you can see my small set with the V-flats and also where my desk is and the product table. It's all right there. This is also where I do my portrait shoots and other commercial work. As for improvements and other things that I would want done in this room, well, I would like rafters on the ceiling so that I could mount my lights and my camera up there so to lessen all the clutter of the floor space, you know, and it's better right there so no one would bump into any of these C stands or light stands. Another would probably be to transform that other side where the couch is into another set so I could have it as my live stream webinar area. I would transfer the 810 mini there, another camera, another set of lights, so that we have some change and variation from, from this background. And that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this studio tour. I only wish that I had a camera operator to follow me around so that it would have been easier and no awkward, unflattering angles with my vlog setup. But you know, it is what it is. As for the D4 Duo, I hope I was able to demonstrate its features and showcase its capabilities very clearly. It ships on August 13, and if you want to get your hands on one, I posted a link in the description. It's an Amazon affiliate link, so please buy it from there so I get a bit of support for my show. Now, if you want to know more about the product, check out my unboxing and review video on Hammerhead Gearhead. You can also check out my work on Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.